I was professionally diagnosed with depression about three years ago. So when I was about 15 and a half, 16. I would say, I would say probably when I was around 16 or 17. Uh, yes, I was by a doctor and I was about 34 years old, around 1985. Nowadays, a lot of people coin the phrase, I'm depressed, but they don't literally mean they're depressed or understand what it means to be depressed. Depression isn't, I'm sad today because I got a bad grade on my test, or I'm sad because I broke up with my boyfriend or girlfriend. Depression is a real mental health issue. When dealing with depression, sometimes it is hard to tell friends and family. Um, my family always knew, um, and I told my close friends. Um, they seem to get closer from it. Um, no one really like distanced themselves or like gave me any bad rap for it. Everyone was pretty supportive. Some people, most were supportive, family and friends, but some people, I think, felt like they were had to walk on eggshells a little bit or felt nervous around me. No one ever really treated me differently, I want to say. I don't... A lot of my friends were very supportive. Um, a lot of my friends also have anxiety or depression or some sort of mental illness but no one ever like pushed me away or gave me any negativity about it really. Some treated me with um, care and concern. Um, my husband didn't understand depression so he just thought I was being lazy and he would get mad a lot until he understood what it was. There's no specific age that you can get depression. You can discover it at any point of your life. I would say I've always, I would say I've always experienced it, but um, the older I got, the more I felt it within my mind and my body. Young in grade, probably in grade school like fourth and fifth grade. Depression isn't generic. There are many different levels and kinds to it. There's major depression, and that can be a single episode or a recurrent episode. A single episode is, like it states, one episode um, in your lifetime. It could be a long episode, it can be a short episode. Recurrent depression are shorter episodes of depression and then you kind of go back to feeling normal and like yourself, and then you go back to feeling depressed. It could be two years later, it could be a few weeks later, a few months, but it fluctuates between feeling depressed and feeling like yourself in like a normal way. Dysthymia is another form of depression. It's um, low level depression for two years or more of your life so you function pretty well you can go to work you can go to school it's not that debilitating crippling depression but it's low level and it feels like it's there all the time with major depression you get more of the suicidal thoughts and the the deeper darker depression then there's bipolar 2 depression which is a type of depression that fluctuates between highs and lows so some people that have um, they don't go from depressed to, to their normal behavior it's depression and then a high um, there's postpartum depression which only occurs after you have a baby and there's seasonal depression which occurs in the fall and winter months and then goes away in the spring and summer months there's also adjustment disorder with depressed mood which is um, a shorter period of time it's something in your life has occurred and you get a bout of depression for three to six months because you're adjusting to something that just happened in your life and then you move through it and the depression is gone depression doesn't have a face it feels different to everyone who experiences it depression to me feels like 
the biggest rain cloud you could ever find on a rainy day. It feels like a hot, heavy blanket like over my entire body. Um, sometimes it feels like physical pain, um, like a sick to my stomach or like a head pain. Um, it feels almost like a cancer, something that I wish I could get rid of and I can't. It feels like suffering deep grief for someone that you loved as if they had died and um, it just eats away at your stomach. Depression for me feels like the overcoming sense to just cry or frustration that I can't get rid of or just bad thoughts that are always in the back of my mind. Like, it's something I can never fully get rid of. And even if I have a great day, like I'm smiling, laughing, having a fantastic day, I get home and I crash because it just goes over my body. It just takes me over completely and there's nothing I can do about it. I feel tired, um, unmotivated, sad, scared, irritable, and anxiety, a lot of anxiety. Coping skills are very effective in decreasing symptoms of depression. Typical coping skills are rel muscle relaxation, deep breathing and meditation, journaling is very effective. Um, there are some great apps out there nowadays. Back in the day we used to have to give people worksheets that told them how to um, deep breathe effectively and how to meditate effectively or go through the stages of muscle relaxation. But nowadays there are great apps out there that guide you through and even do visual imagery which is great especially before sleep. Um, one of my favorites is Pacifica where you can actually track your mood and have an online graph of how you're feeling throughout the day, which for some people that don't want to journal and process their feelings the traditional way, this is a good kind of new age way of doing that. So it's a great app to bring, to utilize every day and bring into therapy to go through with their therapist. But it's also important to have a balance of effective coping skills and outlets and dr distraction techniques. So things like coloring and reading, um, exercise, these are all forms of uh, coping skills as well. To deal with it, I I use a lot of self, like self coping mechanisms, like deep breathing, um, telling myself I'm okay, meditating. Medication's always been something I've used, but more when I was younger, I didn't really realize how medication made me feel. Um, as I get older, I it, it gets a little easier to be able to tell how the medication makes you feel and if it's helping or if it's not helping. Um, but finding a good medicine is definitely something that does help a little bit. The most effective counseling techniques for depression are cognitive behavioral, um, talk therapy, and um, for those that struggle significantly with self-mutilation, um, DBT is a great option as well. Um, at the time I went to doctors, I was actually diagnosed as suffering from depression and I ended up in Pembroke Hospital for six weeks. But I left there because I didn't get the counseling that I needed and they put me on medication, so I followed through with counseling, but it lasted for years, counseling and medication. And I just eventually came out of it, but then I had a second bout of depression when I was about 52 or so, and that only lasted for a couple of months with medication and counseling. Self-talk, and I take medication. 
and I see a therapist. Antidepressants do have side effects that sometimes cause people to avoid taking them. The most typical are at the first, you know, start up the first two weeks, there's a little bit of nausea, maybe some dizziness, um, but that typically subsides. The biggest ones that are more long term are weight gain and sexual side effects, which a lot of times deters people from staying on them, which is unfortunate because it can help drastically with mood. I've gone back and forth with my medication multiple times because I just feel like it doesn't help me as much as it should and I don't see the point in taking it if I'm not going to get big results, I guess. Life being on medication is better. Um, it has balance. I feel grounded. I don't feel as symptomatic. Um, versus off medication, um, everything's a lot worse. It's, you know, very symptomatic. I feel, you know, the depression mainly coupled with anxiety. Um, and it's just harder to, harder to self-cope and make myself feel better when I'm not taking medicine. Because the medicine kind of like evens it out, kinds of, kind of like makes those wires go where they're supposed to go in your brain if you think about it like that. It just curbs everything a little bit. Well, I'm off of it now because I'm not depressed and it, uh, life is fine. When I was on medication, the first one, uh, not knowing about medication, um, I took it for a long time and I had, I didn't like it. It made me feel different. It didn't help me. And then I was on several different ones. So, it either helps or it doesn't. Depression doesn't always need to be treated with medication. Um, I find with my patients that we discuss this at the beginning if they're not on a medication and most want to wait it out for a little bit of time, see how the counseling goes before they pursue that option, which is a good thing to do because there are ways to treat it without medication. But ultimately, most times, the antidepressants help to alleviate that um, deep depression. So usually people with major depression, bipolar 2 depression, those are the strongest candidates for meds. Those with the dysthymia may or may not need it. Um, and postpartum, again, may or may not need it. Seasonal affective, same thing. Adjustment disorder, usually it's not needed because it's so short term. Depression is a chemical imbalance in your brain. Is it something you can just fix? No. And anyone that tells you you can is a bold-faced liar. Because it's, like I said, it's, like a, it's almost like a cancer. You feel it, you know, whether it's subsided a little bit or it's amplified, you're still going to feel it. Um, you know, nobody can ever be cured fully of their depression. It's just whether it gets better. No. Not at all. You have to work at it. You have to get counseling. You have to find the right counselor. Um, you have to be on medication probably because I think it involves a chemical imbalance. And you have to um, think about yourself and your family. You know, keep them in mind so that helps you get over it. Being a therapist is great, but how do they separate their work life from their personal life? Um, I feel like I try and step in with my siblings and my nieces and nephews appropriately and not try and step into a therapist role, but rather um, a supportive family member that actually, actually has expertise, but I don't want to be the therapist for them. And with my daughter, I try and just be her mother. Um, I do have the background, obviously, in counseling, but I don't try to step into my therapist's shoes with anyone in the family. Sometimes it can be hard to tell when someone is suffering from depression. Have you noticed anyone in your family? I have. Um, a lot of people in our family struggle with depression and anxiety um, on, you know, varying levels. Uh, but, you know, it's very, very common thing in our family and it's, I think, sort of a hereditary thing. I think it's kind of been 
dispersed through all of us a little bit. I've definitely seen depression in other members of my family. Um, my cousin, my grandmother, my aunt. Um, it seems to be kind of hereditary on my mom's side of my family. Not so much on my dad's side. Several family members of mine struggle with depression and I believe that is why I actually went into this field because my mother did struggle with depression while I was growing up. My siblings also struggle with it as well as nieces and nephews and my own daughter. Based on your experiences with depression, do you have any advice for any other people? I advise them to go to their primary care, get a physical, talk to them about that, get a good counselor. If you don't relate to one, keep searching until you find a good counselor that you can relate to. And if you need to take medication, be careful on the medication. Tell them everything you feel because I've seen adverse reactions with medication. But I think lots of times people do need medication to stabilize themselves. And just, <clears throat> like I said, keep yourself in mind. Love yourself, love your family. Just keep your family in mind that you have to pull through for yourself and for your family. That's what I did. <laughs> to talk to someone they trust. Hang in, do whatever you need to do to make yourself better. Don't be afraid to tell people I need to just be alone, I need this day to myself. Like, um, find something that you can connect with, find music, find anything. Um, it'll definitely help you in the long run. And if medication is something that works for you, take it, take it, don't slack on it. You know, the main thing is to be selfish. You have to think about yourself. Um, you can't worry about what other people think, what other people are gonna think, what other people are gonna say. Because at the end of the day, it's about your happiness and you feeling, you know, as good as you can, um, depression, and makes you, you know, go days without showering and just lay in bed and you have no confidence, but it's just about, you know, stepping back and thinking, I'm okay, I'm alive, I'm breathing. You know, I have a good family support. I have, you know, I have things to look forward to. I have things to be happy about. And you just have to push forward. I mean, I don't, uh, saying this even to me, it's kind of hard, but, you just have to push through it. Um, everything will get better. It does get better. It's just about being selfish and taking the time to make yourself feel 100% and be happy.